Hi there, everyone. I'm Kelly Hydebrader, and this is Lenaway. Students and teachers are making big strides across the county, and they are doing some really great things. We're taking our cameras around the district and here at the Tech Center to see what our kids are learning. Our students at the Tech Center compete against other Tech Center students from across the nation. And this next competition combines three of our classes. Kids are putting their own special talents together for the first robotics competition, and it's a really big deal. So I'm Mark Ackerman. I'm the instructor for engineering robotics and emerging technology at the LISD Tech Center. Um, this robot that you see in front of us is the uh, 2016 uh, First Robotics Stronghold Robot for the Tech Center. Um, it is built in collaboration between um, the morning and the afternoon sessions uh, for the uh, Engineering Robotics and Emerging Technologies class, as well as uh, morning and afternoon sections for the uh, computer programming class and the machining and cam class. Uh, this all starts on January 9th. The kids have 32 days to design, fabricate, assemble, and program a working robot. Right now we're kind of in the throes of uh, getting our robot assembled and uh, hopefully we'll have it all put together and working tomorrow night. After the concept is done and we build the engineering model, that's when we'll send it over to um, uh, the fabrication uh, machining and CAD. Uh, class to begin the fabrication process um, and then we also will work with um, the computer programming class uh, immediately so they start to understand what kind of controls the robot is going to need. Um, this is very much like a video game at home in some cases. Um, the kids control the uh, motion of the robot with either a joystick controllers or an Xbox controller. So one of the things that I realized that the ISD had um, was the ability to collaborate and build um, sophisticated details for the robot. And if you look at this robot here, all the aluminum pieces here, here, the, this base plate, all the bracketing. Um, th if you look at this side picture here, um, this where just the mount for this plate to this to this plate. This was all fabricated by the CAM and machining class. Um, unlike residential and building construction where you build a house to a sixteenth of an inch, uh, we have to design and build things sometimes to five ten thousandths of an inch. That's um, three zeros and a number in front of the uh, decimal point. So, what well, kind of pulls everything together um, from a mechanical and electrical standpoint on the robot is the computer programming. Um, the electrical team will actually design the wires. This is a, a, a motor relay. Uh, it controls the motor. It basically tells the motor three state, two states. It's either on or it's off. Um, we have more complex uh, motor controllers that actually allow uh, variable voltages to be applied to the motors so we can control speed. That ability all comes from the computer programming class uh, so that we can actually control it. Um, the computer programming in the, um, in the robotics world makes the robot do what it's supposed to do. Um, you know, all the other mechanics and electrics, it, it ties everything together. So I'd, I'd like to also thank uh, the Buildings Trades class. They built um, obstacles and a miniature replica of the tower for us this year for Stronghold. And we were also able to bring some of uh, the students in the Building Trades class into the uh, FIRST Robotics team. The students are eligible for scholarships through uh, different universities, different manufacturers. Uh, FIRST has sponsored up to uh, $25 million in scholarship opportunities. The kids uh, can compete in this from the age of uh, freshmen all the way to seniors in high school.
it's a lot of work, but you really can't tell because these kids are just having a blast. And these are skills they will use for the rest of their lives. So proud of that group. Next, let's look in on our entrepreneur marketing and finance students. They have their own concession stand here at the LASD Tech Center. We call it the spot, and they come up with some great ways to bring in the customers. Hi, I'm Alexa Bloom from the EMF program here with Haley Perez. So what's going on here, Haley? Today's the grand opening of the spot. We have popcorn, we have the raffle going on, we have, we're selling out a lot of things. It's really busy here. So there's a lot of energy here. What contributes to that? Well, part of that is that our students here at the Tech Center have been anxiously awaiting the grand opening of the spot. They are excited to see their friends and peers working and, of course, excited to get their favorite products and just see what the spot is all about. But we also have an amazing DJ here today. We have Mr. Innocent, also known as Mr. David Atkinson, who has volunteered his time to keep the music going and it's just a fun atmosphere and it's, it's a party. So tell me about some of the products we're selling here. Well, we're selling out of a lot of things, including our combos, which include the grilled cheese and the basil, tomato basil soup. And we also are selling out of the Frosties, the root beers. And um, yeah. So what are some of the deciding factors in picking the products here? Well, we had vendors come in before the spot opened, and we got to try their products, and then we sent out a survey for the rest of the school to fill out, and then we decided from then. A lot goes into it, actually, because every year we start from scratch. So as you know, it's up to the students to get the spot up and running, and that starts with selecting product. Students did product sampling and met with our vendors to try different products for the store and decide what our target market would like. They also did surveying with our staff and students so that we can be we can offer products at prices that uh, we feel our customers uh, would be interested in and we also develop promotional strategies pricing strategies and we've done a lot of collaboration with other programs in our building so how does it feel to run a real business working with real products and money it's a lot of fun. I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience. I'm getting this knowledge for the future, for if I ever wanted to open up a shop or even work there, you just get a lot of knowledge. Here at the Tech Center, we're very lucky to have amazing programs. And we had the opportunity to work with several of these programs in preparation for the school store. Building Trades helped us with our our decor and they created these wonderful popcorn boxes so we could make an archway for our grand entrance to the school store. Uh, we also worked with graphic imaging. They helped to develop our t-shirt design. Uh, they helped to develop other signage and our menu which was very helpful and so we really get to draw on the expertise of these other programs uh, as we are getting our operation up and running and we also collaborate with culinary arts as they provide the weekly specials in the store. Students also worked with video and audio students to create commercials and other video promotions to help tell other students about the products and the grand opening and these were posted on our social media pages uh, just as a way to get all of our information out there and get people excited about the store and its opening. They also work with our culinary students for the food that is served in the spot. It's a really great combined effort and good food. <laughs> now changing gears, the Better Business Bureau will be here next to keep your personal information safe. There's just one place where students are students first and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, or even what you wear. You just need to be there. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Do you ever get calls on the phone but no one answers right away when you say hello? I know I've gotten these. Well, these would be what we call robocalls. And the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau says beware. 
the Better Business Bureau has received hundreds of calls just recently on the, the latest incarnation of these phony robocalls that sound like they're from the IRS. Uh, you get these messages and it comes to you uh, over your cell phone or over your landline and it's a recorded message and it says uh, this is the Internal Revenue or this is the U.S. Treasury calling. Uh, there's serious problems, uh, you owe a lot of back taxes and we're going to bring action against you right away. Now, these are so dishonest, so ridiculous and yet there are so many of them and people are scared. People answer the, they, they call this person back, the person is threatening, he's abusive, he's belligerent, and he says, you're going to jail, you're, we're going to arrest you, and you say, well, I've paid my taxes, I don't owe any money. No, you haven't, you owe us $1,000 or $2,000 or $10,000, and the, the point is this, the federal government, no government agency, telephones you with this kind of news. IRS always sends a letter, so does the Treasury, so does the prosecuting attorney. Uh, when you get these phone calls, these robocalls, understand that they are sent out by the millions. These calls blanket the country. And the IRS would never do that. If they're going to call you, they'd say, they'd, they'd call your name, they'd know who you were. They wouldn't just leave an anonymous message and say, call me back. So it's clearly a scam. Um, we see that many minority groups are especially targeted by these crooks. They'll go after the Hispanic community, they'll go after the Asian community, the Middle Eastern community, because they don't know how the government works. Uh, they're strangers to this, and in some cases the, the IRS agent, if he detects a, an accent from the caller, he'll say, we've also started uh, deportation procedures against you to come and get you and, and have you kicked out of the country. There's a variation of this, where they call you and they leave a recorded message and you call them back, and especially for the seniors, they'll say, uh, we're calling you because your grandson or your granddaughter is in trouble. They owe a lot of money, we're a collection agency, and we're going to have them lose their job, we're going to garnish their wages if you don't send money to pay off their debts. The, the thing is this. When you get a recorded message, a robocall, get, get as much information as you can, who they are, what they say their name is, and get the phone number. Don't believe the phone number. Don't believe caller ID. Don't believe any of that. Write the information down and then stop. Don't do anything. Don't send any money until you check it out first. Call the local Internal Revenue Office or call your accountant or call Better Business Bureau, and uh, we'll do some checking for you. If you need to contact the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau, go to their website, bbb.org, or give them a call, 419-720-7188. When we come back, we're heading to Blissfield Schools, home of the Royals. Go for a mouthful, go for the fun. Go, go for go cakes. Just one stack is what it takes, and it's gopher, gopher, gopher cakes. Open wide, stuff your face, there's always room for more gopher cakes. Empty the box, they're reload, eat those gopher cakes till you explode. Exercise lately. Till you explode. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Many schools are embracing the Google Network. It's a series of programs that are linked together like a writing program and a spreadsheet program. And they are also easily networked on the Internet. Well, this really helps our teachers and our students turn in their assignments and, of course, keep track of their work in that virtual world. And that is what they're doing at Blissfield Schools. I'm Caitlin Jacobs, and I am in third hour, Mrs. Bill's class. What are you teaching today in class? Today we looked at Wonderopolis 
And the whole goal for today was re reading for information and how to um, use some of the context clues, the reading for informational um, strategies to become better readers. Why do you think this is more different than most classrooms? I think using Google Classroom and technology is different because it gives kids more of a chance to interact with the text online and it also lets them explore things that are interesting to them. What do you want us to take away from this class? Uh, first goal would be better communicators, both written and speaking, and also um, to collaborate, to learn how to work together. What do you think this is the most fun part of the class and the students? Uh, my favorite part is just interacting with them. I think they're fun, unique, intelligent, and I just love the interactions. Is there anything you'd like to add to the class? Um, I would like to use technology more often. Uh, we do have great technology here at Blissfield, but um, it's kind of limited because we share it. So I would love for Blissfield Middle School to be one-to-one. -one. So what's your favorite part? I like how um, you can work together with your partner and you can share your documents back and forth. I like Google Classroom. It's very easy to use. Well, it's been like really social and stuff. We've been able to talk to other people and work with partners and stuff. We're here in, in the seventh, seventh grade, grade English at Blissfield Middle School. And we're, we're catching it on the classroom. Isn't that a smart way to work? And talking about smart, check out these smart kids that were here at the Tech Center recently. We hosted the Regional Future Farmers of America competition, and I'm telling you what, it gets crazy. All right, I'm Meredith Thimmin, and I'm here at the LISD Tech Center for the FFA District Contest. From FFA, I have not only learned leadership and character, but I have also gained value experiences, and I've learn what I want to do when I'm older. So for our FFA demonstration, we are transferring, or we are flushing embryos from a cow, so we will insert a catheter, yeah, which, we have one which we already have for demonstration purposes. It will come in through the cervix and into the uterine horns, so we can obtain embryos. We will flush a saline solution through the uterine horns, and it will come back out in this Petri dish. Then we can take the Petri dish back to the lab and search for any embryos that we may find. How has FFA helped you in school and in your life right now? It's, it's taught me a lot to be a leader. I feel like it has helped me prepare for my future because it's going to help me for interviews that I'm going to have later in life and it can help me to get a better job. Uh, it's shown me a lot of leadership skill and just uh, how, how much I like helping people and helping new people uh, learn different things. and. I think that's the coolest thing. FFA has taught me a lot on how to be a leader and to be humble. I mean, if we don't do good, honestly, we get to watch our friends or other people also do good, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Thank you for checking out the FFA District Contest held here at the LISD Tech Center. See you later. These kids are so bright and they're all right here in our area. Well, that's our show, and thanks for sharing some time with us. If you see something amazing going on right here in Lenaway, well, we want to know about it. Email us at lasdtv at lasd.us. I'm your host, Kelly Hydebrader. Make it a great day, Lenaway. Mm -hmm.